Good morning, welcome. We continue today with the third chapter of the portion of Noah, chapter 7, verse 17, Tuesday's portion. So now we read that Vayihi Hamabul, the flood continued, Arboim Yaim, for 40 days, Al Ho'oretz, upon earth, which means in simple terms, it rained for 40 days. Vayirbu Hamayim, and the waters increased, Vayisu Esateva, and they lifted up the ark, Vatorah Me'al Ho'oretz, it was lifted up, from above the earth, because as it rained and rained, the water accumulated, and the boat lifted up. Rashi 17, Vatoro Me'al Ha'oretz. Here Rashi tells us that an engineering statistic, Mishukas Hoysa Bamayim, that the ark was sunk into the water, the ark was down below water level. How far? Achas Asre, Achas Esre Ama, 11 cubits. The ark, if we recall, was 30 cubits high. 11 of those cubits was underwater. So if the ark was 30 cubits, that means 19 cubits above water. That was the division. Kisvina to Una, like a heavily laden ship, Hamishukas, which is sunk, Miksasa partially, Bamayim into the water. Omikrois Shalafanenu Yechicho. Rashi says, as we go on, we'll see the calculations that which led our sages to come to this conclusion. We're soon going to have the calculations. 18, so that was the first 40 days. And I'm waiting for the chart. As soon as we have the chart, we'll go day by day or date by date. But essentially, we learned earlier that the floodwaters began on the 17th day of the second month, Yud Zayin Marcheshwan. So 40 days were the 27th, the end of 40 days, the 27th, entering, in, entering into the 28th, of the month of Kislev. So that's the calculation, and here comes the chart. Okay. So we have here, if you look at the chart, and I'll try and hold it up again, so we can actually zoom into it. On the bottom, we need the bottom. We need the bottom, the bottom of the page. So we can see that the 17th of Cheshvan is where it starts, and the second number after the 17th of Cheshvan is the 28th of Kislev. Rain begins the 17th of Cheshvan. Forty days of rain ends the 27th of Kislev, entering into the 28th if we have complete days. So that's the first Number, we have 40 days of rain. Now, actually, it only says that the rain fell for 40 days, but it fell. You know, you can have flash floods where the rain can fall for an hour and the place could be flooded. Here you had 40 days of intense rain. The waters became stronger and stronger. As Rashi says, on its own. And we learned earlier that also the underground waters came up. And they greatly increased all over earth. The ark was lifted up into the water. So the ark, Vatelech Hateva, flowed freely upon the waters. Rashi points out, On their own, on its own, the waters became stronger and stronger. As he says in 19, the waters became stronger and stronger. Or as we say back home in New Jersey, mucho, mucho. Just kidding. Al ha'oretz upon earth. Vayichusu kol ha'orim agvayim. And the highest mountains were covered. Asher tachas kol ha'shamayim. The mountains under the heavens. 
It went above the highest mountain. So that's pretty high. Now he says, how high did the water go? 20, 15 cubits, mil mile higher. Higher than what? Higher than the mountain, says Rashi. After the water was equal to the highest mountains, it went even 15 cubits higher than that, the water level. Gobru Hamayim, the water prevailed, increased by Yechusu Ahorim, and all of the mountains were covered. 21, uh, 20. 20 Rashi. Higher than the heights of all the mountains. After the water came to the level of the top of the mountains, the waters continued to increase, and they went above the mountains. How high? 15 cubits higher. Needless to say, nothing could survive. In addition to the water, there was also chemicals, specifically sulfur is mentioned, and in general, the chemical reaction was part of the destruction that prevailed. 21 by Yikva, by Yikva, Kolbosar, and all flesh perished, Haremis ala orets that moved upon the earth, that swarmed upon the earth. Ba'if, whether it's birds, or abhem, or cattle, or bachaya, or wild animals, or bachal asheretz, any swarming things, asheretz ala orets that swarm upon the earth. The chayel ha'odam, and all men, everyone was wiped out. As we look into the medroshim, and we're going to talk about it later, the medroshim tell us that there's only one man outside the eight people in the ark who survived, and that was Og. Melech Habashan Og, king of Bashan, who was one of the Nephilim, or the, a descendant of one of the Nephilim, the fallen angels. We learned earlier that angels fell from heaven, and they mated with human women, and they gave birth to mighty giants. Og was perhaps the mightiest of these giants, and he survived the flood, despite the fact that I'm sure it wasn't easy, that's a medrash which Rashi quotes. But getting back to the simple interpretation, everything and everyone was wiped out. 22, of anything that had a breath of life, of anything on dry land, mesudite. Rashi, nishma shruachayim, nishima shruachayim, a breath of life. Asher becherova, Rashi points out from the Talmud Sanhedrin. Page 108, v'lei dogim shebayam, but the fish in the sea did not die. So that's why Noah did not need an aquarium in the ark. We don't find that Noah had to bring fish. Why? Because the fish were able, in simple terms, to go deep enough into the oceans where they could survive the onslaught of even the chemicals. That's a simple perspective. On dry land, things perished. 23, and he, meaning Hashem, or the flood, blotted out every existence, which is upon the face of the earth, from man, to animals, to creeping things, to fowl, they were blotted out. From earth, by Yeshoyer, what was left? Ach Noach, only Noach. Asherita Bateva, and anything in the ark, everything else was gone. Twenty-three Vayimach, grammar Loshin Vayifal, who it's Kal, Bein Loshin Vayipal, not Nifal. When we gives us Vayifan Vayivan, Kol Tevish Sef Hake again, Konei Moche Bonei. Any of these words, Kishunais and Vav Yud Bereisha, and has a Vav Yud, Nokad Bechidik Tachas Ayuda becomes Vayimach. Ach Noach, simply says Rashi, Levad Noach, only Noach. Zeo Pshuti, that's the simple meaning. Well, Medrash the Rashi brings a famous Medrash, that Ach, Gonech Vechoedom, that Noach in the ark was moaning and a groaning, and he was spitting blood. Why? Noach was the chief zookeeper. There were eight people, and Noach's kid said, Don't bother me, I'm, a cru- I'm on a cruise. <laughs> Noach was the chief zookeeper. Because of the trouble with the cattle and the beasts. 
and he was exhausted. It's not easy. Another interpretation from the Medrash, that one day Noah was late with breakfast for the lion, and lions don't appreciate being late for breakfast. So the lion bit him, and he says, tomorrow you'll be on time. The all of Namar, and regarding that it says, Hain Sadik Ba'aretz Yeshulam, that the righteous are paid for their sins in this world. We learned earlier, and the Rebbe explains this, that Noach, Ish, Tzadik, Tomim, Hoya Bidereisov, that Noach was a Tzadik, a complete Tzadik. Ein Tzadik Ba'aretz Asher Yaseto Velo Yecheto. The greatest Tzadik has, at least relative to him, some sin. So Noah was punished for his sin here on earth by being bit by the lion so that he should have a perfect experience in the world to come. That's what Rashi brings down the Mishle to teach us. Good morning. In the Rebbe's talk on this verse, the Rebbe explains that we all have to be Noah. We all have to emulate Noah to try and be righteous people. And we all have to be of service to civilization. Specifically, those who go out to bring Yiddishkeit and Torah and mitzvahs to the world, they have to be of service to the world. And they have to do everything they can to bring Torah and mitzvahs to everyone. It's like feeding the lion. It's not always pleasant. People don't always say thank you. Sometimes you're spitting blood. Sometimes it's not appreciated. Nevertheless, we've got to keep going. Because that's the mission of righteousness in this world. That's an interesting interpretation on this Rashi, where Rashi quotes the Medrash that Noah was bitten by the lion and spitting blood. Now we read 24. The water continued to prevail upon the earth for 150 days. We learned earlier, yesterday I believe, Kates, kobosor bolafon, at the end of all flesh, God said, will come before me. Kates has the numerical value. Kuf, tzaddik, 190. The 190 represents the 40 days of actual rain, poor, and the 150 days of vayig beru hamayim, of the water intensifying. So here we see that 150 days, the water swelled, and that goes until the first of Sivan. So here we have the timeline. Again, the flood starts on the 17th of Cheshvan. The 40 days end the 28th of Kislev, in the middle of Hanukkah. <laughs> Rosh Chodesh Sivan is the end of the 150 days. Okay, so here we have the 190. Now in the Rosh Hashanah service, we have 10 verses where it says that God remembered. This is one of these 10 verses. By Yizkir Elikim, chapter 8, verse 1. And God remembered, as Noach, Noach, Beis Kol and all the animals, Beis Kol and all the cattle, Asherite, which were with him, Bateva and the ark, and God caused wind to pass over the earth by and the waters began to recede. They quieted down. Rashi This name Elokim connotates the attribute of justice. This attribute of justice was transformed to the attribute of mercy through prayer. Prayer has that capacity to take the attribute of justice and flip it to compassion. And the flip side is that the wickedness, the wicked behavior of wicked people, Hefechas can flip and transform Midas Rachmim, the attribute of mercy, the Midas Hadin, to justice. Shanamar, as it says earlier, Bayar Hashem, and that's the attribute of mercy. Kirabo Ros Haodam, that the wickedness of man was great. Bayamar Hashem, the attribute of mercy. Emcha, I will blot out. Ushem Midas Rachmim. Why? Because when Human beings are wicked, even the attribute of compassion becomes 
an attribute of justice. What did he remember? Okay, he remembered Noach. Noach was a righteous man. What did he remember about the animals? Zechus, he remembered the merit. We learned earlier that Noach, his sons, entered into the ark separate of his wife and their, son, and their wives. There was no intimacy permitted in the ark. The animals also did not engage in intimacy in the ark. What was the merit of the animals? The animals who were in the ark were the modest animals to begin with, the ones who did not crossbreed. The merit that they did not have relations with animals outside their species before the flood. And the animals did not engage in intimacy in the ark itself. In fact, as we will learn soon, there is one creation who could not control himself and did engage in intimacy in the ark, and that was the raven. The raven couldn't control himself, as we will study. A spirit of consolation and relief passed because of the earth. To calm. An abatement of anger. So here we learn that the waters began to chill. We look at the uh, timeline here. The waters start to recede. The first day of Sivan. By Yisachru, Mayones, Tehem. And the fountains of the deep were stopped. Varube Sashamayim and the windows of heaven. By Yikola Hageshem, Minashamayim. And the rain was restrained from heaven. Two by Yisachar Mayanis, Kishnitluksiv, when they opened, it says, Kol Mayanis, all. The Kanek Siv Kol, the Fishinish Taito Mehem, Eisen Shiesh Bam Tzedek Leilam. Certain fountains underground water were left. Certain chemical waters, mineral fountains, Kigain Chamei Tveria, like the hot springs of Tiberias, or Kayetze Bohem, so that there are springs which mankind benefits from to this day left over from the various mineral springs or chemical springs from the time of the flood. <laughs> Withhold. Verse 3, by and the waters retreated, may Allah us from the earth, continually, and the waters decreased, at the end of 150 days. So, again, we continue. There was 150 days where the water continued to recede. Rashi, Mikzei, Chamishim, Masyayim, Hizchilu, Lachzer. They began to decrease at the end of 150 days of increase. V'hu be'echad b'sivan. And that's the first of the sivan, as our timeline says. And Rashi reviews the timeline. That's where the timeline came from, this Rashi. Kate said, how does it work? The 27th of Kislev, the rain stopped. So you have three left in Kislev. Three, uh, 29 from Tevis and 32. It's 32. 29 plus 3 is 32. Shvat, Valdu, is 118. That makes 150. And the ark rested in the seventh month. On the seventeenth day of the month. On the mountains of Ararot. Now here, this Bachodesh Hashvi, Rashi says, what's Bachodesh Hashvi? Now if you're counting Chodesh Hashvi from Tishrei, so then Nisan is seven, and it should be Nisan, but that throws everything off. So here Rashi says, Bachodesh Ashvi is Sivan. How does the seventh month become Sivan? Ushvi, look, Kislev, it's the seventh month of the flood, of the stopping of the, of the flood. So this is a difficult seven, where Rashi interprets this as Sivan. And here we see in the timeline, 17th of Sivan, 
the ark rests on Mount Ararat. Beshiva also yaim, mikana tolamit. From here we learn. And here's the Rashi that I referred to earlier. Shahoisa hateva mishukaz bamayim yudalaf amma. That the ark was below the waterline, 11 amas. Shadeksib, because it says, Vasiri bechad lachaydish niru rashi yahorim. The tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Ze'ov, this would be of, shuasiri lamachashim, which is the tenth of machashim, lirish lakshonim. Ve'im hayu gavayim alahorim. And they were above the mountains, chamesh esrei amma. As we learned earlier, from the first day of Sivan, they began to recede. Until the first day of Av, 15 cubits during the 60 days. One cubit every four days. On the 16th of Sivan, they decreased only four Amas. The next day, it rested on the mountain. This tells us that it had to be 11 cubits in the water upon the mountain. So that's the source, the biblical source of this calculation. Five Ahamayim and the waters continue to decrease until the 10th month. Look in the timeline. First of Av, mountaintops become visible. Be'echad ba'asiri be'echad ba'chodesh on the tenth month, which is Av, the first day of the month. Niru Rosh Yehoram, the mountaintops become visible. Ba'asiri Niru Rosh Yehoram ze Av shu Asiri lo Macheshvan, which is the tenth of Cheshvan. She hischal Ageshim when the rain started. Vim Tamer, if you say shu El, that it's the tenth Elul. Ba'asiri lo Kislev shepasak Ageshim is the tenth of Kislev. Like earlier, shame shot to Eimer B'chedesh Ashvi Sivan. If Sivan is Shvi, then El has to be ten. For Shvi Lafsaka, you have Shalem. Okay, it doesn't work that way. Al Korcha Chashvi Atomein Lafsaka. It's a different calculation. Shalei Cholo Abayim Mem Shalei Shanu Meir Chamishim Shalei Tabrayis Amayim Adachad B'Sivan. Rashi is doing what we have here, the timeline. Vimatayim Shvi LeYirida Ein Zasivan Vasiri Efshalim Mesal Yirida Shimatayim Lafsaka Bo El Yatomei Tzibrushin Vechal Chedesh. Because at the end of 40 days, as we will learn, when the tops of the mountains were visible, he first sent the raven. And then 21 days he waited for sending the dove. 60 days. If you're going to say it was El, so it first became dry in Cheshun. And Rashi adds here, or the Rabbi Yeshua, who needs Rabbi Yeshua has another calculation. But again, it's easiest to follow the timeline, which is the result of all these Rashi's. So let's look at the timeline here on the first of Av. The mountaintops became visible. And then he waited 40 days until Noah opens the window. And that's verse 6. By he it came to pass, Mikates, at the end of our boy Yom, by Yiftach Noach, and Noach opened the table, the window of the ark, Asherosa, which he made. Remember, we learned he made a window. If you have the picture of the ark, you can actually see the window on the side of the ark in the middle near the top. Good morning. Rashi, Mikates, our boy Yom, Mishinido, Asherosa, from the time the mountains became visible. Which means from the first of Av. He waited 40 days until the 10th of Elul. Let's say, Har, the window he made for light. This is not the door. Also, the BLC, which is made for entry and exit. Seven. At that point in time, on the 40th day, he sent the raven. And the raven went back and forth. Until the water was dried up from the earth. So the raven could not really fulfill his mission. Now the question is, why? What's the problem? The raven did not want to go any distance from the ark. The raven refused its mission. Like a mission impossible to say, should you decide to accept? The raven decided not to accept. Why? Because the raven suspected that Noah has something in mind for Mrs. Raven. In the mating department. As it says in Sanhedrin. 
Actually, the commentaries say that the raven was not suspicious that Noah wanted a mate with the raven. The Noah was suspicious that Noah would want to cause another bird to mate with the raven. Why would the Noah be suspicious? Why would mating be on its mind? Because, as I mentioned earlier, the Medrashim say that the raven violated this rule and did engage in mating in the ark, so this was on its mind. Ad yevashis hamayim until the waters dried up. Pshutei mishmoi. The simple meaning is that it waited. Avol medrash agoda. The medrash says that the raven refused to go. Muchan hayo eidav lishlichas acheres batziris shomim bimeilio. That the raven was prepared for a different mission to stop the rain in the times of Eliyahu. Shenamar, as it says, There's a famous story in the book of Kings where Eliyahu came to the king and decreed there would be a famine. Why would there be a famine? Because the Jewish people were very sinful. So the king said, took out a hit on Eliyahu Anobi. He said, I'm going to kill you. So Eliyahu Anobi ran away and he hid. And the raven brought him food during this time. So the raven said, my mission is not this mission. My mission is later in history when Eliyahu Hanovi requires food, I will bring him food. Now there's some interesting interpretations on this verse. Why would the raven not listen to Noah. And why would the raven be willing to go and bring food to Eliyahu Anobi? In simple terms, a raven is known as a cruel creation, a creature. A raven is not a giving creature. Therefore, the dry land means that blessing would come to the world. The raven is not interested in bringing blessing to the world. The raven is interested in calamity. Therefore, says the raven, you want me to be part of a peace mission? I'm not into peace. What am I into? I'm into punishment. I am excited. Why? Why am I excited? Because when Eliyahu Anovi will come to Achav and will proclaim famine, this I like, famine I like. But in order for the famine proclamation to work, the prophet has to survive. I'll help the prophet survive so the world could experience famine. So that the raven enjoys achzori. He's an achzori, achzariut, cruelty. And we find, look at the word here in the middle of seven. Ad yivoshet hamayim. The word yivoshet means until the water is dried up. The word yivoshet has the same letters as tishbi, backwards. Eliyahu ha tishbi. This is Eliyahu ha Tishbi, fantastic about the raven. These are some of the commentaries on Rashi. That's why the raven said, I am reserved for Eliyahu and Abi. I like bad stuff. I don't like doing good stuff. And from here we learn again. And this is consistent with the Tanya we're studying these days. That whenever Hashem wants to do something good, He sends it through good creations, good creatures. He wants to do something not so good? He finds not such good creations. So the raven says, you save me for the bad stuff. I like to bring famine. Who is the creature, the bird that likes to do good stuff? The, the dove? The, the bird of peace? Verse 8. So here we see the timeline. Tent of El, the raven was sent. Verse 8. And he sent the dove, Lirais, to see Hakalu Hamayim, whether the waters abated Me'apne Adama from the face of the earth. Rashi Vaishach Sayyayin, the same Zayin Yom at the end of seven days. Look at the timeline. Seven days to the 17th of Elul. Sharik Siva Yacholet Zayin Yom and he stayed another seven days. Miklaus Atolemit, Shabbat Ishena, Echo Zayin Yom, that the first time was also seven days. Vaishalach, Ainz Eloshin Shlichas, Eloshin Shiluch, sending. 
Shechalach Sadaka sent it on Sona, but Zoyira, that's how he would see him. Kalo Amayim, if the water would abate. Shimtim Tzamanayach, Le Soshevel, if it would find a place of rest, it wouldn't have to come back. So again, back to the timeline. On the 10th of El, the raven was sent. Seven days later, on the 17th of El, the dove was sent. Seven days later, the 24th of Elul is seven days later. The dove brings back the olive branch. Nine. The first time the dove didn't find a resting place. She came back. Kimayim apne called it because there's still water upon the face of the earth. By Yishlachyadi extended his hand, by Yikacha, and he took her in, by Yavayis of El Ateva. And he brought her back to him into the ark. Verse 10, by Yachalay Chivas Yamachen, he waited another seven days. By Yisif Shal Sayyidim in Ateva, he sent it again. And here we learn that on the 24th of El. I'm sorry, Rashi 10. By Yachalash Namtano waiting. Eleven. Then the dove came to him. Lays it up towards evening. There's an olive branch which it plucked with its beak, with its mouth. A freshly grown olive branch. The Rebbe talks about this. This is not some olive branch that lasted for the last nearly year under chemical waters. This is a fresh olive branch which it had to pluck so that somehow it grew. And the olive tree is a very tough tree. So it, 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 it has survival uh, DNA. If there's something growing, then the water has abated. Now the question is, is this a female dove or a male dove? I say it's male. Therefore, the verse sometimes refers to it in male gender, sometimes female gender. Generally, Yonis, female, in food. The dove said, I would rather my food be bitter like olives through the hand of God, and not sweet like honey but in, through the hands of man, and every creature likes independence. No one likes entitlements. No one likes to be given and given and given because it's destructive to the human being. We learn this from the Dov. It's called, in, in, in Torah language, in Zohar, the bread of shame. When we give people something for nothing, we're shaming them. People need to work. 12, he waited another seven days. And that's the other seven days from the 24th of El until the 1st of Tishrei. By Shalach Zayone sent forth the dove of the Aid, and she didn't come back again. The dove flies away. Noah removes the cover of the ark. 13, she came in the 601st year of Noah's life. The first month of Tishrei, and the first day, the waters dried up. By Yosar, Noach, Asmich, Sateva, Noach felt secure enough to take the roof off. He opened the convertible top. By Yar, and he saw that the ground was basically dry. Uh, not dry enough to walk on, but uh, <clears throat> the waters had receded. I remember years ago there was such a horrific rain here in, in, uh, in our area. Uh, at that point in time, I used to walk almost every day on Burbank Boulevard. And the, the, Bur the whole Burbank Boulevard was flooded. It, it, was, it was horrible. Anyway, finally, days later, it dried up, and I felt secure enough to go walk again. But there were you know, pockets of water, so I went off on the side. As I went off on the side of the road, <laughs> going down, <laughs> I went down literally to my knees in mud. I came back so caked in mud, and, and I thought about this verse. And uh, that's it, you know. I waited about four years after that until I went back. Uh, Rashi, Barisha in Rabbi Eliezer, Tishrei. Rashi is reminding us that there are two opinions. Rabbi Eliezer says, Tishrei, Rabbi Shuo, Nisan. 
Rabbi Yeshua says, Nisan Chorbu Nasa Kimintit, it became muddy. Shekormu Ponea Shamayla, because a crust formed on its upper surface, but if you walked in it, you fell through. Like this guy said, help, help, I'm up to my ankles in quicksand. He says, the ankles, that's not so bad. He says, but I fell in head first. <laughs> that's bad. Verse 14 of Achodesh Hasheni. And in the second month, Beshiva Be'esim Yehim, on the 27th of the month, Lachodesh, Yof Shahoris, the earth was completely dry. Now we find something fantastic. The flood lasted an entire year. From the 17th, of Cheshman, the 17th of Cheshman, until the 27th of Cheshman. Now, if it's a year, it's the 17th till the 16th, or the 17th till the 17th. That's a yard site. Why do we need a year plus 10 days, <clears throat> or plus 11 days? So Rashi says, this is the concept of the Jewish leap year. Every year, the lunar year, the Jewish year follows the moon. Every year, the lunar year loses approximately 11 days over the solar year. When we talk about the year of the flood, it was a solar year. So it had to be a lunar year plus 11. Rashi. The Shiva Vesim, Biridosam, the rain fell. Bachedesh Hashem, the Biyud Zayin, Bachedesh, on the 17th. Elu, this represents Yud Aleph Yom in the 11 days. Shachama Yisaita Avona, which the solar year has 11 days over the lunar year. Because the judgment of the generation of the flood was was an entire year. Yovsha, what do we mean? It became dry. Dry enough to, work, to walk on Burbank Boulevard. Nasigrid, it became hard. Kilchosa, as it always was. So now we see in the timeline, which I'm going to hold up again, if we can get our producer here to zoom in at the bottom of the page. The bottom is where the timeline is. Bottom, bottom. No, we need the bottom of the page. Bottom. Okay, now let everybody see the whole thing. Okay, so now we see there that the last, the closing date there is where the earth became dry and the flood was over, and that's the 27th of Cheshvan, and it's really difficult to impossible to study this portion with Rashi without a timeline such as this. So if you're serious about knowing what went on, many chumashim today uh, of, of sophistication have timelines, and it would be a good idea either if you can see this one or to get a chumash with a timeline. Okay, end of today's chumash portion.